Why don't you show Wizard Kelly? Why haven't you posted recently on TikTok? What is the weirdest reason you stopped talking to somebody? What is the biggest misconception from social media that you'd like to debunk? And let's cheers to that one, okay? Cheers to the girls weekend. <laughs> What's up, Brad Babes? It's your girl, Amira Ali, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome to the Brad Babes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all, welcome back to another video in Vlogmas. So, this is probably our second to last video at this point because by the time you guys see this, tomorrow will be Christmas. So, I figured, why not? <laughs> do an end of the year Q&A where I allow you guys to be super invasive and nosy. Just decided why not give you guys a pass to be nosy and ask questions that you normally wouldn't really get the chance to ask. I do like doing updated Q&As and sit down videos with you guys. I really want to start to do them at least like once or twice a year, like every six months or so because so much can happen in your life in six months. So to be able to just sit down, answer questions, do life updates, these are the type of videos that I really want to get more into because I just love talking to y'all. Like, I really, really, really do. It gives me the vibe when I go live on TikTok. And trust me, I will be back very soon. Like, I have to say this in every video because every video I'm getting comments. When you coming back to TikTok? When you coming back to TikTok? And y'all even asked me that in this video, which we will address later. But yes, I'm coming back very, very, very soon. As you guys see, I have on my topicals eye patches. I already did my eyebrow. Wow. I'm really obsessed with the color pink. <laughs> like, what? I already did my eyebrows off camera so that you guys can have my full you know, attention. I also poured me a glass of wine. The wine that I will be drinking is Bartonura. The blue bottle, which I believe is Moscato. <sighs> so I'm so excited to be getting into this stuff. Cause when I tell y'all, y'all ask some questions. Oh baby, y'all ask some questions. Y'all did not waste no time. <laughs> My guy, <God>, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> these questions are so funny like just going through them it's like wow wow <laughs> um but yeah i'm really excited to like just really get into this and start talking to you guys i made sure that i filmed this video three hours before i actually have to head out and leave just so that we have more than enough time to talk about everything and i just want this to be a very vulnerable open and honest space are you ready because I'm ready. Let's get into it. Well, I already did my skincare. I am going to be priming my face with this MAC primer. I'm going to go on with my e.l.f. Grip primer right after just so that the makeup all sticks. I'm kind of contemplating do I want to wear foundation today. And I already did an updated makeup routine. If you didn't, please go watch it because I will not be talking about the products in this video. I just want us to talk. The thing about my makeup routine has changed. So let's just get right into and it. What is the weirdest reason you stopped talking to somebody? I really wouldn't say it's weird. Like I've always been a type of person, even when I was younger, I've always been the type to be really heavy behind principle. Like I've always been very heavy on it. And I feel like for me, to some people, the reason may be very weird, but to me, I don't feel like I've ever stopped talking to somebody for something weird uh, maybe the other party has viewed it that way but the most recent thing that I could think about and the only reason this has come to my head like right now is because there is a current discourse going around on TikTok and even though I haven't been active on TikTok maybe I've been watching and because there is a current discourse on TikTok about this particular subject this is what is making me think about it so one reason which is the most recent that I have stopped talking to somebody was because I had to find out about their accomplishment on social media now, I don't know if you guys have seen the whole discourse about two close friends who, well, at least they thought were very close. It's a girl who's hanging with her friend two days later or a few days later, whatever. She logs into social media and sees that her friend just purchased a home. Everybody who I saw respond to it, responded to it in a way of, yeah, you should just be happy for your friend. It's not about you, blah, blah, blah. But because I have actually felt this, I can let y'all know that it's not a matter of be happy for your friend because I'm pretty sure if it's your real friend and you know, this is somebody that you actually love with no ill intentions, no secret animosity, you are going to be happy for her accomplishment. You are going to just be ecstatic. However, it's not about allowing your friend to like speak on things when it's done. Because if that's the case, most of us do that. And I think that's a way that a lot of people should move. And by the way, you guys, I do have on something under. My biggest thing behind that situation, especially when it happened to me, it's just the fact that 
and we are so close why do i have to find out about your accomplishments on social media to me it just gives we're just not as close as i thought we were because if we're close friends best friends i understand waiting until things are done to speak on something but for me to have to find out on social media along with hundreds or thousands of people that you don't really like or talk to or who people who really don't even care about you for me to find out alongside them i think it's just very telling about one the type of person you are because i feel like for me that'll just show like you are you clearly care about validation from others i would say that and then i would also say damn like do she think i'm a hater that she couldn't tell me at all or damn maybe we're just not close friends because for me personally with my accomplishments my friends may well most of my close friends they know like when i'm working on stuff or above all even if they didn't know things that i'm thinking about and working on before it's posted and announced my friends know because one thing about my friends y'all i love sharing good news with them and vice versa because we celebrate each other we we just with that type of friends you get what i'm saying so i just for me personally it's not really about oh your friend didn't tell you until it's done it's not about that it's, damn okay you closed on the house you signed the paper and i just have to find out on instagram I, with, alongside all these other people who don't even really care for you like that to me I just think that's messed up that's just me personally and that was one of the reasons that I had to stop talking to somebody because I just felt like it was very telling of where we stood as far as our friendship that's the only reason I thought about that is because I saw it on TikTok literally today when I was looking at a lot of people's responses I was like wow a lot of people are totally allowing the situation to just like fly over their head like it has nothing to do with your friend waiting until things are done to announce it it's just like why do I have to find out on social media like are we really friends for real and i also feel like be careful speaking on things until it's done to you because i know a lot of people who said that and when things happen to them and they have to find out things on social media they're very sour just be very careful um to all my friends who commented and asked me questions about how much i love y'all y'all know i love y'all 10 times over somebody said is the biggest misconception from social media that you'd like to debunk so there's a few of them first one that comes to my head is people say that i glamorize nursing i i just want to debunk that real quick because i do not think that that's a fair assessment to me if you go on my page you'll see that i post plenty of things i do feel like when people say that i glamorize nursing what they really want to say is i glamorize the life that I created from nursing and there's nothing wrong with that so we need to separate the two because when we talk about nursing let me let y'all know there is nothing glamorous about what I do it's hard work every day I go into work it's hard work if y'all just watched one of my recent vlogs y'all saw uh, about the things that I was talking about during my shift the type of things that I was going through and baby there was nothing glamorous about lice about bed bugs about blood transfusion reactions there's nothing glamorous about what i deal with okay so i i just want to make that known i do not glamorize nursing but i do glamorize the life that i live off of it and i feel like i, I should be able to you know none of this was easy and when i think about my life I, I just really see how blessed i am you know just to be where i am at such a young age i think that that is such a blessing because when i look around at a lot of people my age or what a lot of people were doing when they were 21 they were not doing what i was doing and i'm not saying that in a way to say like oh it's a race and this is where you should be in your life i'm just saying that to say when i look at where i am i'm so grateful for the life i was able to create at a, at a young age and i'm still not even where i want to be but i feel like when people say i glamorize nursing what they really mean is i glamorize the lifestyle that i created from it and there's nothing wrong with that yes i should be able to glamorize the fact that i have a roof over my head i have clothes on my back i have food in my fridge my bills are paid on time well early because we know on time is late that i'm able to create experiences for myself i'm able to save money like these are i don't know if, if people are just living on their phone and only on social media but there are people who are going homeless right now. I truly do believe that I'm blessed to be able to be 25 years old and do all of those things. There's some people who are 25, hell, even 30, don't know what they want to do with their life. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Let me just say that. You know, I got a preference about saying that. There's nothing wrong with that. If you don't know what you want to do yet in life, that's fine. But for me, yes, I'm young and I'm able to do all these things. I'm going to glamorize that. I don't care what anybody has to say. However, we know that getting urinals thrown at you, showering patients who got lice and bill, ain't nothing glamorous about that, baby. <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing glamorous about that. We could just say that. But I'm not gonna allow people to constantly make me feel like my content is false, what I stand for is wrong, and I'm motivating people to get into nursing for the money. No, I'm just sharing my life. And if that motivates you to get through nursing school, 
so be it. Somebody said, what do you think are the worst male and female zodiac signs and why? Honestly, I try not to get too much into signs because I don't know which of my followers or supporters are which sign or not, but I can just speak from my experience. As far as the men goes, male cancers, period, like I, I think that they truly suck. <sighs> men are already horrible creatures, right? And then when you add <laughs> an emotional, yikes. Yeah, so we're just gonna say for men, I would definitely say cancers. For women, I've had the most worst experience with Scorpios, but that is just my personal experience with those two signs. I'm not even gonna say too much, y'all. That's it. So, one of my most asked questions, why haven't you posted recently on TikTok? We miss you. And let me let y'all know this. I miss you guys so much. I miss TikTok. If you don't think I miss TikTok, you're crazy. TikTok is my home. That is my home base. That's where I started my whole content creator journey. Um, it's like I said, it's home for me. Like there's no other place that I would rather be than TikTok. However, there was just a lot of overwhelming events that happened a few weeks ago, caused me to just take a break and take a pause. And honestly, I can say that God is so good because even through the bad, I, I really do appreciate the lessons that I learned from it. And I've learned so much and I feel like I couldn't go into 2024 without that lesson. You know what I'm saying? It made me so much stronger mentally and emotionally because you have to remember, this is my first time you know being in the public eye well the closest thing to it now I've always kind of been like popular I would say in most of my schools but I've never really been like like this like on TikTok where you have almost 300,000 people watching you you're getting millions of views you're getting hundreds and thousands of comments like your, your content is going places I'm talking about even when I went to Jamaica Dominican Republic people were recognizing me so it's like my content has reach you know and I'm not just saying that to glow I'm saying that to say when you have so many eyes Eyes on you as much love as there is there is a lot of hate but for me I can confidently say that the love outweighs the hate however there was just a lot of things that happened um, that really just had me in my feelings for real because like people are just very mean the internet is a very cruel place and the things that people say behind <laughs> behind their phones and keyboards I'm telling y'all people are so ruthless like they, they they're unhinged the things that people say and the links that people go to just be rude and disrespectful um it's absolutely crazy because these are the same people who would not say these things to you if they saw you in person let's just say that they wouldn't yeah i don't know there was just a lot of stuff going on and i just felt like i needed to take a break and i just really needed to use that time to one finish up vlogmas which i've been doing a great job at and when i first started vlogmas y'all i was posting on tiktok youtube and instagram so i feel like this break allowed me to really focus on youtube really focus on growing my instagram it, it allowed me time to just focus on other things which i I just feel like needed to happen it also created a really strong barrier for me um so now going into 2024 i feel like i know so much about myself um and i'm just like really prepared for this next level of content creating i just really had to realize you guys people who are about their business people who are looking good people who are confident they ain't online trying to tear other people down when people used to say things about me online i used to really get offended and it would really hurt my feelings and i feel like this last situation that happened for me was everything that i needed to happen to really put me in this position where nothing can hurt me <laughs> So yeah, try it, honey, and let's cheers to that one, okay? Cheers to the girls' weekend. <laughs> Needed that. All right, so to follow up with that question, somebody said, are you going to be back posting on TikTok soon? The answer is yes, I will be, y'all. Y'all don't even know how soon I am coming back. Y'all really don't even know. I swear, one day you're just gonna be scrolling on TikTok and be like, damn. I just asked her when she coming back. I ain't even gonna give y'all no warning. Y'all just gonna see me pop up. But one thing I can say is y'all, I have the best supporters. Like the amount of people that were reaching out to me, sending me kind messages, just letting me know that they were waiting, you know, my comeback. All I can say is I love y'all so much. I did not have to send me those kind words and messages. There were so many videos that I was watching on um, my TikTok for you page and I would just be watching it and then I would see me tagged in the comments and people would still be saying like, yes, she's my inspiration, yada, yada, yada. And it just makes me feel so good. Like it truly does. So I will be back very soon. Like literally go to bed tonight, wake up tomorrow and you might see me on your for you page i'm just saying <laughs>
Somebody asked me, did you have a season of isolation before you got into a relationship? Um, honestly, you guys, I did. And I wouldn't even say isolation in the way like, oh, I just wasn't like talking to anybody. But if you guys watch my story time, that I just put up about getting cheated on. Um, during that time, I just really took time to be single. I used that time to get in the gym. That's when I lost so much weight. I lost about 50 pounds. Um, I was really just focused on me. I was just focused on doing better, honestly. I was finishing up in school and I was just worrying about leveling up in every way. And right when I was just at my peak, y'all, peak, living life, then he came. <laughs> There go Wizard Kelly. Definitely do think uh, isolation phase where you're just working on yourself. I'm not saying you, you can't date, but I do think when you're working on yourself and you're not so pressed and everything is like a man, a man, a man, a man, I do think that is when God will just come and just bless you with everything you've been looking for. How, to, how do you handle the hate from social media and stay so consistent and positive? So like I just said about like TikTok, you guys, the good outweighs the bad. I see a lot of people who I motivate, a lot of people who I inspire, a lot of people who just genuinely love me. And I feel like that is what is able to keep me going versus the hate comments or whatever. Cause I feel like even with all the positive content that I put out there, people still find a way to be mad. <laughs> like. It doesn't matter what I say. I can literally say, I can say thank you God for having all my bills paid on time. They're gonna say, well, why, why couldn't you pay them four days earlier? God damn, I'm sorry. <laughs> What? Like, what am I supposed to say? It doesn't matter what you say. Um, people are always gonna find a way to be, you know, rude and nasty. And honestly, what you have to understand is how somebody responds to you, how somebody talks, or the the thoughts that people have, or even the comments that people leave, is a very clear picture of how they feel about themselves. It's literally projection. That, that's all it is. And when you start to look at things in that light, you'll understand like how many people are out there unhappy. So versus meeting them with hate and nastiness right back, maybe kill them with kindness or just block them like I do. Once you think you're gonna come on my page, in my comments, being disrespectful, oh baby, I'm gonna block you and cheers to that. <laughs> Cheers. Honestly, when it comes to hate comments, I just understand that it's all projection. It all comes down to how that person feels about themselves. They just need to do some work, some inner work to really figure out why does it hurt them so much to see other people happy and living life. And then I just pray for them. And I just pray that they find the happiness and, you know, fulfillment that they need in life to no longer have to go around and make others feel like ish to make themselves feel better. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Somebody said, how tall are you and what made you accept your height? I'm 5'8", technically 5'7 and a half. So for me, y'all, I think growing up, you know, I grew up when everybody wanted to be fun size. Everybody wanted to be five, um, five, four and down. Y'all know I'm a little tall. I'm like five, five and a half, five, six. So for me, I mean, I don't really see it as like that tall, but I mean, if you, if other people see it like that, I don't know. I, I love myself, you guys. I learned to love myself in every shape, size, height, season, whatever. Like, so there really is no cheat code to it, I would say. I've just really learned to love me. And I also think that goes with knowing where you're celebrated. Like, whether that's with friends, men, whatever. Like, I'm not gonna go anywhere where I don't feel celebrated, where I feel like I'm gonna feel uncomfortable. Would you ever like, host a nurse's event? I would. And I am very soon. Oh, yeah, I hate talking while I'm doing my concealer, but I will. And I am very soon. We will be doing a meet and greet, and I can't wait to see all of you there. Uh, I've been talking about it with you guys on live, so I'm really excited to see like how it turns out. It's gonna be next year during the warmer months when you know everybody is out of school. Remember, a lot of my um, followers are in nursing school. A lot of their semesters um, end around like May ish, so I just want to make sure that everybody has a fair chance to be there. I don't want to do it while everybody is in school. So next year we will be having an event. Make sure you guys are following me on all platforms. Y'all not gonna want to miss it. Y'all not gonna want to miss it. This this event, especially it's my first one. Oh baby, we're going up. <laughs> we are going up. I can't wait to do a meet and greet. I can't wait to see all of you. Um, I do want to do host more events next year, but my first one for sure, I do want it to be a meet and greet. Like. So somebody said, why don't you show Wizard Kelly? And when I tell y'all I've gotten a lot of that, 
That is probably like my number one most asked question. Just to be really blunt about it because it's really nobody's business who he is. But mine. I don't think I need to show who he is. I feel like my relationship is private but it's not a secret. Like people know I have a man but I don't feel like they have to know exactly who he is. When you love something and you cherish something, it's so important to keep it private. I really don't think everything is for social media. A lot of people post for social media validation and I'm just not one of them. Yeah, y'all, it really may be time for a new camera because my camera kept overheating i had to take a little break and put on my setting powder in the meantime which was the one size powder but anyway back to the topic um honestly no i would never post my man i don't think i have to post my man i don't think it's really anybody's business who he is like i said it's important that your relationship is private but it's not a secret like people should know that you have a partner but do they need to know what they look like what what profession are they in how much money do they make no i really don't think that's anybody's business i feel like for me yeah like i'm just not gonna post it i don't need validation from the internet and this is why i kind of stepped back on talking of anything about my relationship to like down to even like gifts and experiences i will no longer be talking about because when i tell y'all people are just weird people are weird even with the little bit that i do show people are very weird so i do believe that when you love something and you cherish something you want to just keep it close to you and keep it private because because what's understood does not have to be explained. I, I've been there and done that even with my own past situations and I see how weird even women can be um women will literally try to talk to your man just because you're with him. They don't have no interest in him. They do not like him. They don't even think he's cute. They just see that you're with him and now they want him. I, I've been in weird situations like that. They want to be his friend. They want to be his best friend. They want to I don't have time i don't have time i know that my man is not like that i know that he's not into those type of things y'all when i tell you y'all couldn't find him if y'all wanted to he's a ghost like and that's exactly how i love it no whatever i do really like and cherish in my life i just like to keep it private and off the internet that's that so all the people who was asking when am i gonna post them when y'all gonna see him maybe never somebody said do you want kids if so how many i have been talking about this so much on my tiktok live i don't know if i really ever addressed it on youtube so no i do not want kids you guys i don't want kids I don't want kids. I don't want kids. I don't want kids. I've never wanted kids. Um, I've been saying this since high school. If you knew me for a while, you know that this is nothing new. I've been saying this for years. And now that I'm older and I can like really look back on my life, I really realize that I feel that way because I am the oldest child. That's I, that's one of the reasons that I feel that way. Um, but yeah, it's probably one of the biggest ones. I feel like being the oldest daughter, you you live a life where you sacrifice so much and you do so much for everybody around you that I almost felt like I never really got to be a kid in certain aspects. And when I look back on my life, I realized that a part, a big part of the reason why I do not want kids is because I'm the oldest child. And honestly, y'all, I feel like I just started living my life. I, I really did, because think about it. I just graduated from nursing school, just became a nurse. And honestly, even when I was a nurse and I was still living at home, I still didn't really feel like I had my 100% independence and then when I moved out when I was 23 which was just two years ago y'all and I just turned 25 so probably like a year and a half ago I feel like I just started living my life for real like I just started traveling I just started doing things for me and me only and not having to put other people before me and really just be selfish you know what i'm saying this time around so if i already lived a life for 20 something years of sacrificing so much for others why when i just started living and you know just started living for me and putting me first why would i give that up <laughs> like that's crazy to me i'm sorry i can't give that up right now like there's like a million other reasons that i can tell y'all and we will be sitting here for hours like i can really like talk about it i'm really tired of just talking about this topic because i feel like i talk about it so much on tiktok especially when i'm li on live but for me like like i said being the oldest daughter it really put me in this mindset of not wanting kids like the sacrifices you have to make if you're not the oldest daughter you would never get it if you are the oldest daughter you will understand exactly what i mean and not the oldest son the oldest daughter specifically like i'm very grateful for the life that i was able to live because i feel that everything that i went through as a child or growing up not saying that i had like i'm not trying to sit here and say that i went in the trenches or anything like that like no i'm just trying to say that i was out here selling bricks or nothing like i'm not saying all that i'm not saying all that what i'm saying is the sacrifices that I did have to make, it just made me not want kids. And I feel like that's okay. Some people just need to learn that not every woman wants kids. Not all of us are here to, to be fulfilled by children. Not all of us 
want that and i feel like people should be okay with that i feel like it's so hard when people hear that you don't have kids they they always want a million reasons well why or maybe you didn't find the right person yet or maybe you didn't this or maybe you didn't that or you're gonna change your mind when you find the right person you will and talk to me again in like five more years you can still do it who's gonna take care of you when you're older like girl Please, enough is enough. I, if I said no, I said no and let's leave it there. I made so many decisions for my life and obviously I turned out very well. So how is it that I'm able to make all these other decisions about my career, about relationships, about friendships and all these other things. But when it comes to kids, I'm not qualified to make that decision for my life and my body. Like I don't want it. If I don't want it, I don't want it. And I just really don't want people to keep forcing that idea on me. Like I'm young. The examples that I've seen you guys, I see a lot of people, listen, I, I didn't, we don't even gotta get there, but y'all know what I'm talking about. And above all, like when I ask other people, like why do you want kids then? Why do you, oh, who's gonna take care of me when I get older? Your kids are not your retirement or insurance plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, what about my legacy and my name? What do you have to your name? So give me another reason, hit me with something else. Somebody tell me like, if, if I'm selfish for not wanting to have kids, you're selfish for wanting to have them because you're literally making plans for somebody who's not here and for somebody who didn't ask you for nothing. So in, in reality, we could both just be selfish and leave it at that. I don't want kids and a conversation. Somebody, like another question that I just keep getting asked is how did you and your man meet? Love that it's private and not a secret. Thank you girl for getting the memo. Um, I would never do that story time again though. <laughs> I did that story time back when, um, I was like just getting on TikTok and that's when my live used to have like anywhere from like 40 to 50 people. It was a very small amount of us and we were just like vibing. Like if you were there during that time when I was like just, you know, getting started on TikTok live and stuff like that, if you know, you know. Like, but honestly, I don't think I would ever. We live in a time where now like everything is screen recorded. Everybody wants to screen record things and I'm just not willing to tell that story. I'm sorry y'all. Like I love y'all, but I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Like if you heard the story and you were around for that time, then you heard the story, baby. But I, I ain't, I ain't talking about it no more. I'm sorry, I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I had to do my lip combo off camera, which I hope looks good. The first time I do the lip combo, it really never looks good. That's why I make sure I do it with enough time before I leave. Cause once I let it like die down a little bit and put some pink gloss on top, y'all, fire. So don't mind it right now if it's a little too pink. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little too pink, sorry. I'm gonna take out a lip combo, but I had to just set my face with my Morphe spray. Then I like to go in with the one side. I don't know why that burns, like what? That has never burned me before. We're gonna let that dry. Finish up the question. So somebody said, how do you politely tell people to mind their business when it comes to your relationship? Just like this, look at me. Mind your blood clot. <laughs> No, I'm playing. Um, honestly, like I think it's easier said than done because I am a recovered oversharer and I'm learned to not overshare my business. So a good way to not, like if you don't want to answer a question, a good way to not answer it specifically is just to like say maybe, maybe not. Or try to just change the so the subject. But I do. if you guys have any other tips, definitely feel free to comment down below. But for me personally, I do like to do the maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Or just switch a topic. What about you and your man? Yeah, people get real quiet then, baby. They get very quiet when you start to ask them about them. So, you know, I've just learned to like switch the topic or like just leave like cliffhangers. I don't know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Oh, do you live with your man? Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. What does it do with you? Are you paying the bills? Oh, damn. Let's finish up some questions. Somebody asked about a wig install video. Y'all, when I tell y'all it's coming, I have been using up all my old wigs. I used to be the type of girl who would always want new wigs and just keep purchasing new wigs, but I realized it's a waste of money. Why am I spending six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars on new wigs every time when I can reuse the wigs that I had, change out the frontals, and that's actually a hack that I learned from Melody because if she, know, if anybody knows, she knows I am good for always getting a new wig. So I haven't gotten a new wig yet. I've been continuously using my old ones. That's how you know these wigs are good. Okay, make sure you are shopping the wig addiction and that's on period. But I will be placing an order for the new year for some new wigs. So you guys will get full on tutorials on from start to finish, start to finish. Bleaching, plucking, install, frontal, closure, it, everything. How long after your three day shift does it take you to recover or do you, to, or stay in bed? Um, honestly, it depends on the three days. Sometimes I have a really good three days where I just need like to sleep in until like 10, 11 o'clock and I'll be okay. Sometimes like this week that I just had y'all, it took me a good two days to recover. 
a good two days this week and I still got up and made content and that was big because normally I'll just say F it all and I'm laying down but it did take me two full days to recover like I had a really bad three days but it honestly just depends on the census it depends on how many patients it depends on the severity how sick they are like so it truly just depends but I would definitely say it, if it's a good week it just takes me literally just allow me to sleep in a little bit and I'll be good Otherwise, I may be down for a day or two. Because just remember, you just worked 40 hours, somebody's entire five days. In um, Favorite thing about being a woman. Honestly, I'm such a girly girl, y'all. Like, I love doing everything girly. Like, hair, makeup. I love pink, as y'all can see. Like, I'm just a big girly girl. Like, I love everything about being a feminine woman. I really love it. Like, 2024, I really just want to tap more into my soft girl era. I don't know. I love everything about being a woman. Probably not the periods so much. We could probably take that out there in the PCOS but otherwise I really love being a woman y'all like everything a lot of people who are asking how much I make I'm just not yeah, like come on I told y'all to be nosy so I can't be mad that y'all ask but y'all know how I feel about you know spirits monitoring spirits evil eye all of that I don't talk about finances I think there are a lot of nurse creators who do and kudos to them I'm, that's just not my lane y'all it's not I do think as a creator there are certain things that you should keep private and for me that's always going to be where you work how much money you make where you live and your relationship those things i think you definitely should keep off the internet um best savings tips so for me the best savings tip that i really just learned um was to have your money automatically go into your savings or whatever so for for me personally which i will be coming out with things very soon for you guys as far as um savings but um I've learned, like I used to trust myself, be like, oh, I'm gonna just transfer the money myself. I'm just, don't trust yourself. Just have the money automatically come out of your check and transfer it to where it needs to go. Do not allow yourself to see it because once you see it, you automatically think like, oh, you have more money than you actually do versus if it actually just gets transferred from jump time it touches your account you're working with what you got so that's one number two i would say separate your savings account like have at least more, have more than one savings account have one for maybe just emergencies one for bills um i would also say open up some high yield savings accounts if you don't know what a high yield savings account is it's basically a better way for your money to grow um a lot of these banks they're giving you like pennies for your money just sitting there and if you open a high yield savings account your money can be making so much more so get you some high yield savings account get you an investment account uh, whether that's a 401k whether that's a Roth IRA get you some investments have multiple savings account and transfer your money automatically that's my savings tips for y'all but I will be coming out with a official finance guide for y'all very 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 soon so stay on top you know stay on top of that what's one thing in nursing that disgusts you mine is spit and honestly i'm not gonna lie y'all every nurse has an ick like i know some nurses who just can't take poop who can't take pee um but for me it's definitely emesis like vomit i i, I do not have the stomach for it i mean like it really makes my stomach turn and um just seeing it come out of people's mouth even or even like spit as well just when i have to collect a sputum sample just hearing the oh my god yeah, i don't know it does make me ick. i have to do it you know what i'm saying i have to be there i have to clean it up i have to help like that's not the problem but it, it's everybody has that thing that they just can't take you know what i'm saying like they just have a weak stomach for it. and mine is definitely respiratory secretions and emesis like yeah yeah does work ever feel boring or repetitive my family is full of nurses but i don't really know about their work honestly for me as an er nurse it doesn't that's why i specifically chose er because i feel like for me everyday work is different i mean you do see a lot of common complaints but i feel like in the er you're always learning like i come home every day and i've learned something new you know so i would definitely say for me at least as an er nurse it doesn't get boring or repetitive sometimes throughout the day you're doing a lot of, it does probably get repetitive like the actual work you have to do because in the er we're like the first contact for the patient so you're doing a lot of workups a lot of ibs a lot of meds um so you'll see like a lot of common things that you'll do you'll be able the more you do it you'll be able to anticipate the treatment for a patient but i say overall i do think like in the er my brain is constantly you know working and i really love that so that's one of the reasons i really love the er what is one tip you would give teenage you oh i'm gonna try not to cry oh i'm gonna try not to cry um just one <laughs> there's so many i would love to like talk to my teenage self about but it would definitely be be yourself for sure i would definitely tell my teenage self to be yourself i feel like when i was growing up because you know i was such a people pleaser which i do also tie back into being the oldest child i would say that i used to really like 
change a lot for the people that I was hanging around, whether that be how I talk, whether that be the things that I thought, or really just not stay true to myself. So I would definitely just say like, be yourself, like you're gonna find your tribe. And I also felt like I wanted to be liked so bad that I would, you know, just alter who I was. And I just feel like, I'm such a cool person, like who I am, like who I am right now is who I've always been. And I feel like I always had to alter that to be like, depending on who I was around. And I feel like I didn't have to do that. Like I can just be me. What's for me will always be for me. You get what I'm saying? Like I don't gotta switch up how I talk, how I walk, how I act for anybody. So that's definitely a huge piece of advice. I would have told myself as a teenager, it's just be you, that's it. That was a very good question. But um, as far as lip combo, I didn't even tell y'all. So this Refi lip liner is so tea. I use this, this is in the color sepia. And then I outer line with the Juvia's Place in the color Coco Latte. Then I go in with the NARS um, Le Freak lip, what is this, a lip gloss? It's like a lip gloss. Then I go in with this little beauty supply store lip gloss, it's a clear color. And y'all see what I mean? Like once it starts like settling in, the pink really like, it really like, you get what I mean? <laughs> eats it out this is what i'm talking about like when i first put it on it'd be like a little ooh. but when you let that thing sit baby oh yeah it'd be eating it up i really enjoyed this wow cheers y'all cheers this was fun i want to do this again more often i like i really want to <laughs> i'm lit y'all <laughs> I really did enjoy making this video. I do want to do this more often, whether that is a QA, and a um, life update, chit chat, whatever. I really do enjoy doing chit chat, get ready with me. There's so many topics that I want to talk about, which I will be talking about soon. Honestly, I don't be really going nowhere, but that's my fault. I really need to stop waiting for me to go somewhere for me to film these videos. I can easily just do my makeup, sit down, but honestly, y'all, makeup is fucking expensive. Oh my God. <laughs> But you can't tell me they go is not expensive. Like these products that I'm using, they're not cheap. One size is not cheap. NARS is not cheap. When I tell you I'm lit, that was disgusting. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below a few things that you took away from this video, even if it was just one. Let me know down below in the comment section. I love you guys so much. Merry Christmas Eve. And I will see you guys in the next video. Merry Christmas, Brad Babe.